In the last video, we made the blank for the stand-up paddleboard. In this video, we're going to be preparing it a bit. We'll start off with a rough shape just to check it out, see if it's what we want, and then sand it and get the top and the bottom surfaces smooth. I'm starting off by adding glue where there's gaps between the board and the wood. The Gorilla Glue is working much better than the expanding foam, but still, no matter how hard I try, it seems that there's gaps yet. Cutting the wood a little bit flush to the foam so it's easier to move around and work with. And then planing down the extra wood so it's flush with the foam. By using the planer instead of the belt sander, I was able to take the wood down flush to the foam without digging the foam up. It kind of looks like I did here in this shot, but it's just the way that the foam glued up to the wood. We didn't really dig into the foam at all. I tried to save a piece of the protruding wood to act as a keel like we had in the last board, but it didn't really work out so well, so I ended up taking that down as well. I'm going to want the board to be very flat and smooth when I put the fiberglass on it, so I'm going to sand it. Here I'm taking an old piece of 2x6 and gluing some old belts. Uh, they broke, but they still had good sand on them. So I'm just gluing the belts up to the uh, 2x6. I wanted to get a rough idea of the size of the board I was going to want. So here I am using the commercial board with a smaller box than on the last board to trace out the size of the board plus an additional four inches on either side. The board I'm making is a little bit shorter than the commercial board so it just hangs off the end. Now I'm using the box to kind of give me a guide as to what perpendicular is so that I make a good cut. Didn't work out so well actually. Here we have the rough shape cut out on half of it. And then the sanding starts. There's sanding and sanding and sanding. I was at it for a week and a half just sanding so that it finally got as smooth on both sides as what I decided I wanted. I didn't want to use power tools or take off too much material with the planer because I really wanted to get it smooth and flat and every time I started up with the power tools when there was only a little bit to go I took away too much material so it didn't really work out to my favor too well. Overall the results came out pretty well. There's still some pretty big divots that I decided to fill because I'd have to sand so much more that it would take off a significant amount of foam. So one of the things I tried was melting some styrofoam and acetone to use as a filler paste. It worked somewhat, but the results weren't great. One of the things that didn't work so well using the melted polystyrene is that you had to be careful to saturate the acetone with the polystyrene as much as possible. Otherwise, if it's too wet, it would just melt the surrounding polystyrene when you stuffed it on the foam. I also tried filling with Gorilla Glue, thinking that that might work out okay, but that didn't work out either. I'm going to fill the remaining divots and voids with epoxy mixed with talc, making a paste. And here we are with the board sanded down as smooth as I'd like to have it.